safe noise. Hold up! Oh, 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 oh! Ready? I can't see ah. Nice! Um, gonna do a little bit of a kind of... Mm, what do you want to call it? A little in, instructional video here. Um, been on YouTube lately. Haven't been making any videos, but... Looking around, just seeing a lot of people who um, shooting long rifles, mostly high caliber bolt guns, or uh, hell, even pistol. And I've seen some AR-15 as well. They're they're complaining about how their their shooting is suckish, so to speak. Um, and one thing that I've looked at on them is while they're shooting, their marksmanship fundamentals are not going into play there. They're not breathing steadily, they're not they're not doing tr proper trigger squeeze. Um, they're basically doing everything wrong. The way they hold the rifle, the way that they... Uh, everything. Um, the one thing that I've noticed the most is, especially with large bolt guns, everybody's been anticipating the shot and they're scared of the recoil. One thing to learn is never anticipate your recoil. Ever. Don't matter what weapon you're using, even on a 22, don't ever anticipate the recoil. You always want the recoil to surprise you. So, let's just say you're you're hunting a deer. You got a large bull gun. 308. Pretty decent sized round. And your your blood is boiling, your heart rate's up, uh, the blood's going to your head everything. You get tunnel vision, everything. There's the moment where you stop, slow down, take your breaths, breathe. Try to calm your breathing, slow down your heart rate. Also, another thing is when you're holding your rifle, don't ever press it tight up against your body. You don't ever want to do that with a large caliber rifle, especially at longer ranges from 100 yards and farther. For the tactical community, that's great at close quarters engagements, but this isn't the tactical community you're hunting here. This is a 200 plus some yard shot that you're trying to make, where an inch is miss and hit. So, to demonstrate a little bit, I got my, my Delta on AR-15 here, I've got it set up for coyote season, and I'm just going to kind of show you guys most people are doing and how you fix that. And here I got a, as you can tell I'm broke, I have a dummy snap round I made myself. Just took a, a fired projectile that was still pretty decently intact, put some lead shot in there, and gorilla glued it. And does the trick. Anyway, so let's just show you what I'm talking about here. Most people when you see them getting behind a large caliber rifle, they always want to tighten that thing up to them. They want to put it up to their shoulder, they want to get as close to that scope. You don't want to do that here. Here, you want a nice, loose bit. Make sure it's in your pocket. Don't press it in there. You want your muscles to be completely relaxed. Now, one thing I've noticed as well is people always want to try to hold it up here. They want to grab it right here. There's no need for that. Tactical community, that's cool. For this, you can just have your arm back here. You can have it on the ground. You can have it on this arm. You can put it under this hand to support it. It don't matter. Just don't throw it up here, because if you put more pressure up here, the rifle is more than likely to go up, down, left, right, whatever, however you're holding it. So, what you want, you want nice, smooth, pressed up in there. Take your time. Breathe. Just gently squeeze on that trigger until it decides it wants to go off. That's it. Another thing is when you're anticipating the shot, say you're doing it like I am at home. Always, if you want, if you want to. Buy the plastic snap caps. Make your own. It don't matter. 
take time, do it 30, 40 times. Not only does it improve your trigger pressure, you learn your trigger, you learn how much pressure it takes, and also you'll catch yourself flinching. If you're looking through, let's just say you're looking through a scope here, like I am, at a close area, find something and focus on it, preferably rather small. Take it, and as you're doing your breaths, your trigger squeeze, find out after that initial click where the reticle moved to. If so, try working with it, fix it. Don't ever try to aggressively adjust it. Like, for instance, tighten, your, tighten it up to yourself. Don't ever do that. Just learn to relax. You want all of your bus muscles in your body to be completely relaxed. From your head all the way to the tip of your toes. Everything. You don't want no muscle spasms. Nothing. It's all mostly mental. Um, once you get the mental aspect down, you'll, you'll be golden for the rest of your years. Um... I've seen people that have been shooting since they were a small kid. And I ask them, how do, you, how do you get so accurate? It's all up in here, man. It's all here. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, just keep her. And remember, always be safe. Don't ever mix your dummy rounds with your live rounds. I've seen too many of accents with that. Um, especially if you're using ones like mine. I always keep mine separate from my live ammunition. Always. Now the way to tell is if you put lead in there. Just, just shake it before you do it. That's all you gotta do. I mean, you can hear how loud that is. It's pretty loud. So, um, just keep her safe. That's all there really is. It's as simple as that. You can have a group that's way out just by doing these few things. You can get them all the way down to that. At 100, 150, hell, I've seen people make one and a half inch groups at almost 700 yards before. It's all, all mental. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned a little bit. Um, if not, that's cool. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, just giving you some advice here. So, have fun shooting. Hope you guys get some good, uh, get some good results from hearing this. And I know I sure did when I heard it for the first time. So, thanks for watching. See you soon.